welcome. In this session, we'll be looking at the histological organization of the liver. So the liver uh, is a gland essentially. So when uh, we are looking at the histological organization of any gland, we look at the stroma and the parenchyma. The stroma is the connective tissue framework, whereas the parenchyma is the functional component. So let's start with the stroma. The stroma component of the liver has a, a capsule. They should show you that, a capsule. So, I have a notification, maybe will help you. Yeah, you can see lining the outer surface is a capsule here. This is the capsule. Okay. You can see a capsule here. Then at this point, you can see, at this point, you can see it is sending in some septa or trabecula into the river to lobulate it. So, as it sends in the septa, it will also send in the blood vessels, the nerves, and the lymphatics. So maybe this is a blood vessel here. You can see it is running in the septa. Should magnify more. See that blood vessel clearly. Yeah, these ones. You can see these, these ones. And maybe these are uh, the, the bile ducts. These are blood vessels because you can see here the, it's like they are lined by an endothelium, but here you can see these are uh, cuboidal, simple cuboidal. So maybe these are the bile ducts. So apart from the capsule and the septa, we also have a, we also have the, Reticular fibers. Reticular fibers are essentially type 3 collagen, collagen type 3. So uh -huh. you can see these spaces between the, these are the liver cells, the hepatocytes. Those spaces between them are the sinusoids, hepatic sinusoids. Now, between the hepatic sinusoid and the hepatocytes, there is a, a gap, a space, the perisinusoidal space of this. In there, you will find the reticular fibers, collagen type 3. But uh, using the H and E stain, it is very hard to, for you to stain the reticular fibers. So here, I'm sorry that we have not shown you the reticular fibers, that, but they are there. So that was the stroma component. Now, the parenchyma. The parenchyma of the river, the river is, as I will say, is. As I have said, uh -huh. as I have said, the, the capsule we send in separate to lobulate, so it will be divided into lobules. Now you can see it really well here. You can see clearly the lobules. See that is a lobule there. You can see that is a lobule. Three a very good ones here. Lobule there. A lobule there. Um. In this, this, this uh, river is a porcine river, a river from the pigs. This is where you can see there is a clear demarcation of the, of the inter, the interlobular sector. This is the interlobular sector. It's very distinct. But in the human river, it is there, but it is not this conspicuous. But in the pig river, it is this conspicuous. You can, that is why I have prepared to use this one for you to see. The interlobular sector. So you can see this is a lobule, this is a lobule, this is a lobule, this is a lobule. Then you can see at the center of this lobule, we have the central veins. Like this lobule has two central veins here. Okay. So, uh, and note, these are not the only hepatic lobules. This is a, this lobule here, you can see it is somewhat polygonal, like a hexagon. So these are the classical hepatic lobules. But we have other lobules. We have the 
hepatic acinus of rapapo. Then we have the portal lobule. I will show you those ones. How how you how you will uh, how how they are usually demarcated. So let's start with the classical lobule. So in the classical lobule, you can see they are somewhat hexagonal, but not always hexagonal. Let's find a good one which we do. Seven, you can see. So let's use this one. That's a good one. This one. So we have a central vein at the center. Let me show you the central vein at the center. So this. See, this is the central vein here at the center. Okay, then we have radiating. You see, from this central, let me move out a little bit. From that central vein, you can see we have like radiating. You can see the hepatocytes are somewhat radiating. They look like the rays of the sun, radiating plates of hepatocytes. So are the hepatocytes then in between the hepatocytes you can see gaps those are the hepatic sinusoids okay those are the hepatic sinusoids then at the let me show you a uh, something very important here in the in the in the scepter especially at the one which is found like at the a corner one corner of the classical hepatic lobe you we have the portal area this is the portal area or the portal triad or the portal canal here you will find a hepatic uh, arterial a portal venue and a bile duct the intra, the interlobular bile duct. A bile duct, you will find there a bile channel to say so. So the, the hepatic, that, that, this is the hepatic triad, the portal triad, sorry, the portal triad. Or the portal area or the portal canal, I've said it has a hepatic artery. We will find also a hepatic, uh, a portal, sorry, a portal venue, okay, and uh, a bile channel or the interlobular bile duct. So from the from this hepatic venue and the hepatic sorry don't know why i'm confused from the port of venue and the hepatic arterial they will send in channels let me zoom out a little bit i hope you have seen where it is here is the portal triad they will send in channels like this towards the central vein. So they will send in like, they will blood from the portal venue and the hepatic arterial will flow from this portal triad towards the central vein in the, in these sinusoids, the hepatic sinusoids. That is where blood will flow. And it, it will mix venue blood and the arterial blood will mix. Venue blood will be rich in nutrients since it has come from the intestines, and the arterial blood will be rich in oxygen. So, as they flow in the hepatic sinusoids, now let's look in at a hepatic sinusoid. So, these are your hepatocytes. You can see they are somewhat radiating. This is our now in between we have the hepatic sinusoids. These are the hepatic sinusoids. Now, as they flow here, remember a sinusoid is like the sinusoids, the endothelial cells of the 
sinusoids, they have gaps and fenestrations. Some have gaps, some fenestrations to allow free movement of plasma in and out of the blood. So blood will be thrown in these sinusoids from that direction towards the central. This is a central uh, vein. And you can see here is an endothelial cell here, a squamous type of cell. So as they flow here, they will move from the sinusoid into the perisinusoidal space of B cell. Now, in this, those spaces I'm saying they are very small spaces, but they lie between the sinusoid, the endothelium of the sinusoid, and the hepatocytes. So in between we have the the perisinusoidal space of B cell, and in there, the contents of the perisinusoidal space of B cell is in the hepatic steroid cells of ETO. Maybe that, that I should write. So they have the, or just simply call them ETO cells. ETO, ETO cells. Simply call them ETO cells. What is the function of these cells, ETO cells? ETO cells. They have two functions, storage of vitamin A. And uh, remember vitamin A, since it is lipid soluble, uh, it will, they will also store some fat. So, and these keto cells in pathology, in some pathological cases, they usually uh, differentiate into myofibroblasts. So when they do that, you will see extracellular connective tissue. There will be extracellular connective tissue that will lead to liver fibrosis. So, yeah. Another cell type in the, in the, not another cell type, another content in the space of B cell is, as I, as I had said earlier, is reticular fibers, collagen type 3. Then we also have plasma, since plasma will directly move from the hepatic sinusoid into the perisinusoidal space of this cell. We also have microvilli of these cells, the hepatocytes. So their microvilli will extend in that direction to increase surface area for uptake of those nutrients and, all, and the excretion of the metabolic waste. So uh, I think Think what else? Now let's look at the bile. Now, how will bile flow? Bile is produced in these hepatocytes. Okay, then it will flow into the bile canaliculi. Bile canaliculi are simply passages between the plasma membrane, between the cell membranes of adjacent uh, adjacent hepatocytes. Then they will connect into a, they then connect into a terminal bile ductile, then into a perilobular ductile, then into the interlobular ducts. Interlobular ducts, as I said, they are in the portal triad. Now, if this, they look at this bile duct, this is the, this is a lobule here, and is another lobule, it is in between the interlobular. Ductile. You can see it is lined by the, you can see as here, it is lined by simple cuboidal epithelium. Those, these cells lining the bile ducts are known as cholangiocytes. Cholangiocytes. We write that. They are known as cholangiocytes. Cholangiocytes, yeah. These are the cells, these the lining cells of the bile ducts. So, uh, um, what else should I tell you about the parenchyma of the liver? Uh, yeah, I had shown, I had promised you to show you how you demarcate those other reviews. Now let's go back to the Let's go back here. 
So there is this which is known as the portal lobule. Now, these ones which are demarcated by the interlobular scepter, right? these ones you can see here, these are the classical, classical hepatic lobules. Then we have a portal lobule. A portal lobule is, a, is triangular, is somewhat triangular and is bordered by three central veins. So let me let us identify a place where we can see very like here. This is a central vein. This is a central vein. This is a central vein. Let's draw. Let's draw. So from here to this central vein here, then from there to this central vein there, then there to this central vein back. You see that area of demarcated triangular, that is the portal lobule. And in between here to the center here, we have a portal triad here. Here there, there must be a portal triad. So, and uh, this portal lobule usually describe the river on basis of it. it is its exocrine as an exocrine gland. Okay. Then we have another one which is known as the hepatic assignus of Rapaport. So this is the portal lobule, as I've said. Then let's erase this. Then as I've said the hepatic assignus of Rapaport, it usually describes the river on the basis of pathology. And uh, let's see how you demarcate it. You identify two. Let's, you see in this river. Uh -huh. Let's see if we can uh, demarcate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it will be somewhat here. Yeah. Yes, like uh, let's take here. Yeah. Let's see here, there is a port, this is a portal area here. There is another portal area here, okay? Then I do this, as I had done. I join this portal area to this central vein here. Then there, 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 back to there, there, back to there. That area, it is diamond shaped as you, as you have seen, and it is divided into zones. This area next, then in between here, running from this portal triad to this portal triad along this, this sector here is the distributing venue, a distributing venue. So these hepatocytes that are next to the distributing then you add zone one, those further but not very far are zone two. Then this very far away are zone three. So during pathology, the cells which are mostly affected are this in zone one, but the rest of affected in are those in zone three. So this is the hepatic assignus of Rapapaw. So I think I've uh, explained and I hope have helped someone in a way. So thank you guys and subscribe for more content. Thank you.